Okay, right on. Hey. Today's the 12th of April, 2022. And this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres. This is going to be our Anyone Can Farm live chat. It's part of the Anyone Can Farm experience where we discuss things about homesteading, small farms, and just plain living. And I'm your host, Mark, coming to you from lovely downtown Marion, Michigan. Actually, it's downtown. I'm out in the perimeter. I'm out in the suburbs. Actually, it's not even the suburbs. Some people would say the boonies. Pretty far out there. I got a few neighbors. All right. We talked yesterday about pasture poultry. And as we got into it, I decided that we would do a little bit of deep diving diving <clears throat> on certain aspects of it that it takes time to get into. All right. So the topic for tonight is going to be chick brooding and then chicken tractor principles and construction. That's how I titled it. Me, myself, and I did it all myself. Didn't have any help from my secretary. It's just me. Okay. Our sponsors tonight are going to be Orphans of the American Dream and also Baker's Green Acres. Now, if you would like to sponsor one of these shows, all you have to do is call the farmhouse and talk to the secretary, and she can tell you how you do that. Seeing as how we don't have enough people on the Anyone Can Farm experience to have super chat. We don't have that. So that's that's one of the things that YouTube holds over you. You know, they'll let you play the game for a long time and someday they'll let you do that. And you know, someday they'll monetize you. Until that time comes, they get to use all of this content, you know, their advertisers. Whatever. And I knew that getting into the game. I may have to do a little uh, whiteboard tonight, only we don't have a whiteboard, we have a blackboard. But I wonder if anything, anybody noticed anything up here behind me. Anybody make any uh, observations up there? Seed exchange on April, April 16th, 2022. That's this coming Saturday, 10 o'clock. If you would like to come to Baker's Green Acres and hobnob with some of the best farmers there ever will was and will be and homesteaders, you're welcome to come. And we're going to be sharing seeds and mushroom spores and laps and we'll probably have coffee going and some other things. And we had quite a few people last year. It was a lot of fun. It's a potluck, so we're going to eat about 12. <clears throat> and then... Uh, you know, talk about some things, maybe a little conversating about things. Um, this is very important that we do things like this. If you're not able to come to this, I encourage you to have something like this at your facility, right? And maybe you just call a few neighbors and say, hey, come on over. You know, maybe I should be doing that. Um, it's very important that we spend time together and then we can share some of the information that's coming out. Right, there's a lot of information coming out now. The reason why I think it's imperative that we talk pasture poultry, um, I don't think the only way to raise chickens. You know, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of points in here that would be helpful to you. Uh, we're hearing daily. I mean, the top search today, according to Sun Joe, was uh, avian flu. That was the search. So people are wanting to find out what that means. And uh, so I thought about it and I said, I'll give you, a, I'll tell you what I think. I said, Maybe you should temper that a little bit. No, I'm not tempering anything. This is all about, you know, free speech zone. We're going to, you know, hey, this is how I feel. Um, and I'm going to enunciate that. If you don't want to know how I feel, then don't ask me. And I told him, he had not watched the show last night, I told him that uh, 
This is why we're doing pastured poultry this week. It is the time of the year to do that for sure. Uh, but you've got all these agencies coming out and saying, oh, we got a storm on the horizon. Uh, I doubt it's the storm that they are telling you. I think it's something else. I think they're trying to create a storm. Uh, I just don't think that any of these agencies have any track record at all to believe they're saying. You know, why would you? I mean, you really would need to um, stretch it a little bit. Ooh, I didn't turn the chat on. Sorry about that. Oh, I guess it was working. I just couldn't see it. All right. Justin's with Inga, Keith, Sean, Belva. Okay. Spotty sound and what the heck? All right. I'm refresh button. I, I tell you what. Here we go. We're going to refresh. Going to hit the reload. They're just as strong. Okay, we'll leave it on there if I need to. I'll come off. Oops, sorry. All right, I'm going to need a head up here whether you're copying me or not. I swear, I, I don't listen to any other podcasts where the host has to stop and refresh. You know? What is it? All right, I'm back. Thanks. We're going to talk about chick brooding and chicken tractor principles and construction. And this is interesting to me. You know, a lot of ways to do it. I'm just going to tell you where we've settled at this point. This is where we've settled. Much of what I, I said for you guys get that uh, we're having the April. 16th edicts this weekend, Sunday, or Saturday, 10 o'clock. If you have seed to exchange, bring them. If you don't, that's okay. If you want to bring a dish to pass, that's fine. Just stop and get a bucket of or something like that, whatever. Um, and it's, it's just a time of, you know, fellowship and friendship and stuff. Not a big deal. It doesn't cost you nothing. You just got to get here. And, and if... If need be, we walk around the farm and look at things. If, if people are interested in that, I'm, I'm always uh, up for a little farm tour. I always like to do that. Okay, so uh, we're sponsor. Our sponsors tonight are Orphans of the American Dream and Baker's Green Acres. Okay, our point tonight. We're going to do it in two sections. I'm going to do chicks and brooding first and then i'm going to do chicken tractors you know principles and construction okay and then for our extra we want to talk about disaster avoidance right you're gonna you're gonna and a lot of times people say oh that's a gateway animal to get into uh, homesteading it is and when people say that i think they think oh it's uh you know, nothing can go wrong. You know, it's it's very easy to do. It can be, it can be, but there are pitfalls everywhere. In everything that you do, there are pitfalls. There are why something could go horribly wrong. And the reason it doesn't go wrong is because of your attention to detail, um, principles that work and try to stay away from do anything stupid and a lot of times if you're new you don't know it's stupid dumb thing to do i can tell you uh, about a couple disasters that i've had and we'll get into that in a little bit if i remember which i might not okay for uh, you're going to be doing if you haven't done this before uh, you're going to be receiving your chicks as day old chicks and they might be a day or two if you get them from one of the stores, a tractor supply, or um, 
fireman fleet or whatever, you know, they could be four or five days old. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Somebody else has brooded them for five or six days or even 10 days and you're getting them uh, and they're at a good point. You know, if they're going to have a problem, it would probably be between the third and fifth day there. And the reason why is when the chick is born, the yolk is its food supply when it is born until you know that food supply runs out. Now that food supply and the, the baby chick eating, they overlap, which is a good thing. You want that. But at first baby chick eats going through the system and Really working that good at first. It takes a while for it to get going. So, so on day three, his supply is pretty much from his yoke, and he's got to make it on the feeding. Okay. All right. Ben's with us. Cool. Uh, you guys, if I have to refresh, please come back and let me know. I have to watch it to see if it's coming in. Okay. So uh, let me tell you how we have done chicks in the past. Tell you some of the ways we've done them. Um, I started out with a little room that was no bigger than about two closets that I built at the back of my wood shop. Right. Uh, I gotta close the door here because I'm here in feed from my own voice about three seconds sorry can you close that door yep let me just is it not working uh it's working but not so Okay. Should be back. Am I back? Last message I got it. Is... Okay. Am I the only person in the States that can't do a live stream? <laughs> Some days it works good, though. I suppose I shouldn't complain. I don't think I have anything on the farm that works all the time. All right. I'm going to wait till I hear that I'm back from you all. Looks like I have pretty good reception here, according to my cell phone. But back and forth between you and your sunset pick. What about now? Looks good now. All right. I'll tell you what, if it poops again, I'm out of here. All right. I'm aggravated, irritated with it. 
I don't know why it can't work the first time, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> all right for your chicks you're going to need a couple of things you're going to need a couple of things okay let's let's see what we're doing here tell a hamster to run faster yeah <laughs> back now sorry all trying to make it better we can hear you pretty good, but the pick keeps changing to the sunset. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a sign. I'm in my sunset years. All right. Okay, so you're for. For your chicks, you need to be able to do some things. Okay. If it if it if there's one more glitch, I'm gone. Okay, just be advised. Yeah, I'm I'm a little on edge right now with this system. Um for chicks, you need Okay, there's a couple ways that we've done it, and I was about to tell you uh, one way that I did it when I first started here at this farm. Uh, we've done it different ways at our last farm, I guess, but when we did it here the first time, I built a little in the back of the shop. It was probably about the size of this table, which is about you know four feet by six feet, and I put wood chips in the bottom, and I hung an electric heat light in there. And I think I probably did 50 chickens the first time, probably did. And, uh, you know, all went well. Uh, you know, it didn't seem to be a problem. Uh, and I think we did it like that for several years, you know, and we weren't, we weren't really in, the business so we weren't doing that many of them i think we wanted to be when i first started i had two chicken tractors that was where i started and the first two chicken tractors that i built i framed them out of reinforcing rod so they were pretty heavy and then i welded them together on the corners yeah it was a dumb idea they were way too heavy um but that's how we went for the first couple of years. And uh, then after that, I moved to where my office is now. And it's a pretty good size room in the maintenance area. Oh, it's probably about 10 feet by 15 feet. And then I insulated that whole thing and divided it off into sections. And we could brood a lot of chicks in there. And by this time, we had our, I would say, our generation three chicken tractors going. So we were doing quite a few. Uh, not near our peak by any means, but probably doing batches of 250 and then and doing another batch of 250. So I'd probably at any one time, I'd have like 500 birds in this in this area <clears throat> and we, we would reload you know constantly loading some in and loading some out and, uh, we had a couple things that happened down there i remember my son keith who's 18 now, uh said something like chickies like water and he had turned the hose on in there and flooded the entire area remember that happened there was we had a couple disasters in there um but then we moved from there into the clear span building and then we were brooding in, in um, porta huts that we were covering with straw to keep them warm. And we had heat lamps that hung in there. They weren't electric. Um, the hover heaters, they're, they run with propane and they have a little thermostat on them. And we built one of those and then it worked good. So we built another one. And that was about the time I've told you guys before when we started 
uh, making biochar. And so we had these two brooders in there, but then they were connected to a chicken tractor and the chicken tractor was uh, 10 by 12. So they were able to come out of the hut into the chicken tractor and they could, we fed and watered them outside, even though it was quite cold at the time. I just had this feeling like, well, if they can come out, they'll go back in when they want to get warm. And that actually worked pretty good looking back on it. And then we did build a third. So, and you can even go back and you can see videos from a uh, long time ago on uh, on Baker's Green Acres YouTube. They're there. I've, I've come across them. I haven't watched them, but I, I know that they're there. I remember I was a much younger man back then. I was, oh, this is like 15 years ago. And then from there, we had a much better idea. And that's where we are now. Stand by. I hate flies. Uh, we built a brooder that is a freestanding building. The building is 10 by 12, right? It's big enough that I can stand up in it. It's got a peaked roof on it. It has no floor in it, and it's sitting on six by six skids. Six by posts that are pressure treated um it's insulated to like r4 or something like that it's not really super insulated uh i think that would be one thing that i might change in the future i am planning to do some some upgrades to it here maybe even this week maybe i'll have them done even before people show up this weekend because it's it's getting a little raggedy looking uh, I never quite finished, like everything. I never quite finished it. So there's still some insulation that's shown. It's not uh, like foam insulation. It's the Celtex insulation. So it's shown on the outside. And I never did trim it. Um, but, you know, I'd like to make it look better. But this is the design that I will stay with. If I needed to expand, let's say I want to do twice as many chickens, which I don't. Um now back in the in our heyday we were running 30 chicken tractors and we had them all the time we were butchering three or four days a week and we had people moving chicken tract as their like their full-time job you know that's all they did um we weren't we didn't have our water system down pat back then all right so we were tempting disaster a lot of the time, and I'll I'll, I'll explain that. Um, but this brooder is really nice because I've got chicks in it right now that we've been brooding. Uh, let's see, yesterday I think was either three or four weeks. Now, normally in the summertime, at three weeks, they're going out into the chicken tractors. They're big enough; they can they can withstand you know, a cool night, stand 40 degrees at night. Um, but right now it's getting down to 28 degrees to, uh, so they have to stay. And what I do, the exercise yard that's off the side of the brooder during the day, um, it's on the south side of the brooder. They can come out and they can, you know, exercise. Um, again, there's uh, videos of this on Baker's Green Acres if you want to go look at them. The beauty of this system is when I move this brooder into a, a location, uh, it is clean ground underneath the brooder because there is no floor in it, right? So then, let's say three weeks ago, it was pretty cold out. We put wood chips down on the floor or uh, sawdust. The sawdust that I get is completely dry. It's it's bone dry. Um, and we put that down on the floor. I actually buy it. Keep going, keep going. Susan Greaves is with us. Right on. Um, that logo is unbelievable. You got to tell Carrie about that. I put one of those stickers on the Jeep. It looks good. It looks really good. We love it. Um, 
I should get that logo and bring it in here. Hey, if somebody's listening to this in the outer room, could you bring those logos in for me? Um, but the, the beauty of that brooder is it's got its, it's got its own, uh, fuel tank on it. It's got its own, uh, propane hundred pounder on it. It's got its own heater in it. That's dedicated to it. Uh, it has windows on the side that we can open up if it gets too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll show those in a minute. If it gets too hot in there, we can, we can open it up. Um, and it's got the exercise yard on it that's really nice. And it has its own watering system, too, which is really nice. So right now there's 250 in there, which is sort of a small group, right? But at the beginning of the year, uh, you know, we were putting chickens in there when it's still snowing outside. So if you're going to have problems, that would be a time of the year when you're right on the edge, you know? Uh, if the, the light goes out at night, the chicks will pile. That's just the way it is. Now, the the lights that we use, the uh, the hover heaters that we use, they're super dependable, and I take care of them. And I I'm just really careful with everything that's going on up there. However, uh, things happen. The it was Sunday night. I was coming. This is just a couple nights ago, like today's Tuesday. I'm coming back to the house and I'm walking past the tank. And I just I just push the tank a little bit just to see how much is in there. And I push it and it's like there's nothing in there. And it's Sunday night. So shame on me. I should have the backup tank full for just such a situation. I was using the backup tank for something else and I ran it out. Um, and then I looked in to the brooder and I looked at these chicks and I thought, these guys are old enough. If this goes down tonight, they'll be fine. Well, I got up during the night, two in the morning to take care of some business. And as I'm sitting there taking care of my business, I hear boom, boom. I hear thunder and lightning going. And it's just flashing. It's in the distance. And I thought, man, if that comes any closer, I am going to have to get up and do something. Now, then I go lay back down in bed and I think, okay, what am I going to do? And I think, well, if I have to, I will load them into crates and I'll bring them in the house. Because if I don't and we... If the light is out out there, let's say we run out of fuel and we have a severe thunderstorm, we could have problems. And I don't want to lose, you know, chicks that are three weeks old. That is, you've got a lot of feed into them, a lot of time into them. That's not good. So I go lay back down in bed and I'm thinking, I'm just going to listen to it, see if it comes in any closer. I wake up and it's light out. So I didn't i i just totally fell asleep i thought i would be able to stay awake to hear it but i didn't um so i got up the next morning and i rushed out and the heater was still going and everything was fine and i was kind of like right but that shouldn't have happened that really shouldn't have happened i have a hundred pounder out there and then i have a 30 pounder and the 30 pounder is there just in case i need a backup that's what it's for. And I, it wasn't, it wasn't all because I used it for something. So bad on me. Um, I kind of eyeballed it and I thought, man, I should squeak by till tomorrow morning. And I did. Uh, I was puttering around here Monday morning and then I went over and I checked them and the light was out. So, I mean, I just, just made it. It's like cruising up to the, the gas pumps and you run out right at the gas gas pumps that's actually what i now by this time it's sunny and the sighting on the uh the brooder is dark green or the roof and so it absorbs quite a bit of solar and uh you know everything worked okay but i got a fresh hundred pounds there and everything is is good now um so this is how it will go 
this is how it will go. Right. When these guys are five weeks old, we should be, that's going to be at the end of April. They'll be five weeks old. So about May 1st, we'll be taking them out of there and we'll be putting them out on the field. Now, that can be hairy too because, you know, we we get snow in May here sometimes. But the birds will be big enough that I feel as though we should be okay. We really should be okay. You're going to lose birds. Hey, Jeremy Huggins is with us right on. You're going to lose birds more to heat than you will cold. And where I live, uh, we have far more cold than we do heat. And I don't lose birds too cold other than when they pile, when they pile. When you have adult birds and it's really cold, they just kind of stand there and take it. They just, it doesn't, you'd think it would just freeze them right through, but they puff their feathers up and they turn their heater up and they make it. They're okay. Of course, we don't do broilers in the wintertime. I'm talking about my... My laying hens, you know, they, they, they're super tough. They can take anything. I think I still have a hen out there that uh, froze her toes off. And she's still out there, still laying eggs. I don't know. Okay. So a source of heat for your brooder. Uh, we have found that the hover heater and you can get these things from Stromberg's and the ones that I have I paid two hundred dollars for and I've had them ten years and they just don't really fail it's a very dependable thermostat that's on there um, they're just very trustworthy uh, I like them a lot better than electric lights and I've told you all the, the problem with electric heat lamps you know the red ones and even the clear ones is they sit there the weight of the bulb is hanging from the where you screw it in you know you screw it up into that thing and when they heat it expands and then when it cools it contracts and it's and right around the neck uh seems to fracture there and when it fractures the weight of the bulb comes down and it breaks the filaments off and they land in your bone dry bedding and you can have a problem in a hurry so that's why i don't recommend them at all but if you were going to use them you wouldn't want them in a building that you didn't want to burn down i'll just put it that way i mean i've seen people with them in the garage and the garage is connected to the house and i'm there they didn't hire me for consent I don't say anything, but I really feel bad about it, you know, because we've seen a lot of fires due to those. In my own personal uh, experience, uh, one of the brooders that we had, it was actually where my office is now. I went down there one day and it was smoke and it was kind of like, where's the smoke coming from? And when I examined the bedding, there was an ember in the bedding. Um, now, it wasn't super dry because there was a lot of birds in there and they had manured on it. So it wasn't super dry, somewhat dry. And that, that ember was, it seemed to be spreading. So if I had caught it, would at some point, would it just start a flame and then continue? Don't want that to happen. But a lot of things get burned down with those stupid heat lights. So I don't like them. Uh, I did use some last year. What happened is the post office called, hey, your chicks are here. I said, well, I don't have any chicks coming. So we called the company and they said, ah, I was, but go ahead and keep them. Well, these were day old chicks and the chicks in the brooder were two, were two weeks old. So that wasn't going to work. You can't put really little ones in with, with two week old chicks because they're a lot bigger and it just doesn't work out very good. They, you know, they, they wind up getting piled on or squeezed and they're, they're fragile when they're young. And so I was like, well, I got to come up with something else. I had a heat lamp from long ago and I set it up in a water trough, an old water trough. I have three of them 
real the real nice ones that came from tractor supply but on the bottom of them where they where the bottom connects into the sides it's folded in there and then crimped and if they ever if you ever have water in them and the water freezes it blows that crimp out and i've tried a bunch of different ways to seal that back, back up again but at this point sayonara i've gotten i don't want them anymore i've replaced them with the rubber made troughs which i don't use a whole lot of but i've replaced them but anyway those ones make really good small brooders uh they're 75 gallon troughs and you can hang a light in there and my thinking is there's a very small amount of wood chips in there and if i start a fire then it's going to burn the fuel out of there before it gets out of the the tank but i would still not put that tank in my barn or in my house like i set it up in the garden shed which i really didn't think i was going to burn it down i really didn't because i set it in the middle of the floor it's a dirt floor there was nothing close to it even if all of that stuff i didn't think that it was close enough to anything to catch fire <clears throat> But if it did, and I burnt the that house down, I'll build another one, you know. But I would hate it, but I, I could build another one. But building build a barn, mm, that that wouldn't have, you'd go some for that. Or another house with us in it, nah. So that's my thought on those. And uh, I think that the best source of heat really is propane. Now you say, whoa, wait a minute, you got to. You got an open flame there with propane yeah but the way it's configured uh and the, the the construction of that hover heater is made to do that and it's yeah it's 200 bucks but there's a safety vac there's a safety uh factor that comes with that 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 i'm really comfortable with and we've never sap with one of those never so that's that. I really like them. They're about three feet across, right? I have three of them, or now I have two of them, actually. Uh, one of them uh, came in contact with something quite abruptly, and so I had to uh, scavenge some parts off it. So I got a few spare parts on the shelf. I really only use one, right? The other one, I have it hanging in the butcher shop, and it is connected. So if I needed extra heat in there, I could turn it on. And it's not a bad idea just to fire up a you know fire it up once in a while just to just to make sure it's working good. But I got a backup, which having a backup I think is a good idea in anything that you're doing, right? Because if the one that's in there fails, it would take several days before I could get one in the mail, if at all. I mean, they might be on the evergreen stuck in the Suez Canal for all I know right now. All right. So uh, my Bruder offers me, when I built it, I needed protection for the little beings in there from, you know, wind, cold, sleet. Uh, I need protection from predators. All right. We did a film today. Joe and I did a film today that you'll see in a, I don't know, uh, maybe next Thursday or the Thursday after that. I'm not sure if that's how that's working. But um, we point out that, hey, here's a possum. He was on his way to this chicken brood. Now, he, possums are diggers. He would dig underneath to get in there, but he didn't make it because of our dogs. He was, he was intercepted by one of the dogs. I'm not sure which one. Uh, the Great Pyrenees that we use are the uh, premier uh livestock guardian dogs and they happen to be the ones that are in our neighborhood so those are the ones i used they're the only ones that i know enough about to really comment on uh there are others out there there's uh anatolian shepherd um actually the new um male that we got he's one quarter anatolian so he should look a little bit different than obi does obi's nah he's more concerned with what's on tv these days right 
So we had to get a replacement for him. He's still going to be here. We'll still see him here, but he's just not, you know, getting the job done. So um, my thinking is if we're going to use these dogs and we're going to promote them and we're going to say, hey, there's a real problem if you're doing pastured poultry and that problem is predation. But get used to it. I mean, I'd be taking the same stances uh, the president is. Hey, food shortage is coming. <laughs> Time to go on a diet. Get used to it. Yeah, that's not the right way to go. It's like there's a problem. Uh, I'm going to try and offer a solution if I can. If I don't have dogs, I'll turn you on to a couple of my friends that raise dogs. Those those particular dogs. That's where I got mine from, my buddy Evan. Okay. Uh, but if you don't have um, you're going to have to figure out a way to protect your, your chicks in the brooder. Now, if I dog and I had to come up with a way to keep anything from in to the which all night to do it, and they're designed to dig. This, uh, you know, the great escape here where, you know, they're human beings that are not designed to dig. Um I suppose what I would do is I would set up electric around it, some really high high voltage electric. I probably would do that. Um, you can set up 110 volts, and if you set it up right, anything that comes across, you can actually kill it. Right? So you got to be careful with that. Um, maybe a way would be just to have a, a solar fencer that is actually mounted to your, uh, to your brooder and then set up a perimeter with that, like maybe even a net. I mean, I'm not a big net fencing guy. Um, I just, I don't like the way they work and, and I, they seem cumbersome to me to use, but in that case, I mean, it might be your best bet, you know, against predators like possums, skunks, coons i don't have coons here they moved out we had them when we first came here but we've been or the first few years we shot quite a few of them i have porcupines uh we were examining uh next door um jill and i are going to put some some camps in over there for some of our guests to stay in and we noticed quite a bit of uh porcupine action over there you know they eat bark off the tree so something about that okay so that's how we do it now you might ask questions if you have questions i'll i'll get the questions uh in a little bit i want to show you our new logo while i'm thinking of it and this is susan greaves's daughter carrie i mean isn't that neat that may go on the pilot, the back window pilot. I'm really liking that. She did a job. And then I put one on the G today. I couldn't resist. And it was a little bit different. It was one of these. It's a little smaller and it's got sort of a different color background, almost uh, gray. But I really like that. Too. I think that looks so cool. I'm going to be getting a tattoo. I'll show you guys when I do. I'm going to get a big one, I think right up here. And that way, when I do the show, I'll just do it without a shirt on, you know. Yeah, I know, ladies. I know. So, okay, let's talk chicken tractors now. Chicken tractors have to offer some of the same protection that uh, your brooder does. Uh, not heat, but the tractor, and first let me find that a chicken tractor would be a cage or a pen. Uh, we build them two feet high, 10 feet wide, and 12 feet long all right and i may have to go to the board here for in a minute um we 
build the frame i well i built them several different ways the first one we it was well construction with rebar all right that's that was what i thought was a good idea back then come to find out very heavy, hard to move put wheels on the back of it um didn't work out so good um then we went to uh wood construction and I had a bunch of roofing steel around here, and I used the roofing steel around the sides, all the way around, and some on top. So it was flat on top. And that was the same same dimensions, but it was really heavy. The other one was heavy, but this one was even heavier. But I thought, yeah, it will hold together, and you know, a good stiff across the front, I'll be able to move it. Yeah, I could move it, but nobody else could move it. You, know, you practically need a tractor to move it and the downfall on that was the roofing steel came all the way to the ground all the way around so when you have hot days in the summer and there's no airflow through there eh, yeah and i found it out the hard way that was my first uh big loss of of chickens to heat big loss what i have done i could have taken the steel Deal off the side, but it happened really quick. It happened really quick. And I had no idea it was. I mean, I probably should have known, but I didn't. I was really new at this whole thing. Okay. And then we switched from that and we went to a one by four pressure treated uh, ground contact wood. All right. That's it's, it's pressure treated more than the non ground context stuff very dense uh yellow pine and we made panels and then we put the panels together and screw them together uh, we use screws one and five eight screws and L screws and um construction adhesive or uh liquid nails all right used a lot of it and we would make it in panels, and then we would assemble the panels. Uh, it had a peaked roof, slightly peaked roof. I still have two of them out of 30. The other ones have all treaded out. I gave a bunch of them away. My neighbor's cows got in and ruined a bunch of them. Um, they were good. The ones that I still have would go for another 10 years, but we're going to be replacing them with the newest design. And this is a good one, and I haven't quite worked all the bugs out of it, but uh, enough to know that the wind isn't going to pick this one up. And this one is, let's see, did I fully explain the other ones? Yeah, they had a tarp on the top. Because one of the things that you need to protect your chickens from is the sun, right? That's, that's killer for them, right? And with the tarps, we come down almost to the bottom but we leave about that much off the ground so there's enough airflow going through there on the back of the chicken tractor there's nothing it's open and on the front it's open right and a lot of people aren't going to be able to do that because they don't have the the dogs that we have but um they keep everything away all right so let me let me draw the next design that I built. And I think this is a good one. And I think maybe you would want to expand on this design because I, I'm going to. I got to build three new ones this spring. And uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Now, what, what I did, so let's draw this as seen if you're standing in front of the chicken tractor all right so it's going to be moving towards me when i move it now that, that's another thing you need to know for new people here the chicken tractor is moved daily and as we talked about last night you move them daily because the chickens will eat their own manure when it's time to eat and there's manure there hey let's eat it you know they'll eat it and then it increases their their chances of getting coccidiosis, getting sick and stuff like that. So when you move them and it's time, they say, oh, let's eat that clover. They eat that clover. And that's good because 
and chlorophyll on it in it and other kinds of bacteria that are going to go into their gut biome and then you know prevent the coccyx or the coccidia protozoa from attacking the bird instead of other bacteria or bacteria protozoa eat bacteria and then they poop out you know soil or soil amendment that we use Okay, so as viewed straight on, I start out with a, a 10 foot two by four pressure treated ground contact. That means you can let it sit on the ground for a long time. And then we put a 12 footer going that way. It's going straight in, two of them. So if you view this from above, it looked like this. That's a two by four. These are two by fours. And I think what I would do if I do this again, well, when I do this again, I'm going to knock off an inch of those two by fours because they don't need to be that heavy. All right. All right. Then I drilled a hole here. Here, here. So I went right in the corner and then another two feet and drilled a hole, another two feet, drilled a hole, another two. I used 7 16 wood bit. And what that did was that made it so that I could fit in a piece of half inch conduit that I went would fit right into that hole. Right into that hole. You sit there really, really snug. So I put some construction adhesive on that. Whoop! And just that ain't. That, it's not going anywhere. It's never coming out of there. And then you go from this side and you do the same thing, like that. Okay. So it makes that that. Shape. And then we've got viewed from above. It'll look like this. Okay. There's one there. Okay, this is open. This is open okay. for now. Then uh, we put a coupling. They make a coupling that you can use. Uh, these are 10 foot sections of, of uh, half inch conduit. You used to be able to get that stuff for two bucks a stick. I'm not kidding. Not anymore, you can't. It's up around four, four or five bucks a stick. You know, can, can be kind of tough to do because now you're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sticks at four bucks. So, but if you were buying one by four pressure treated lumber, it's going to be about the same. It might even be a little bit more, you know. And I've used these for. This will be the third year. So I have two of them. And uh, then we we put a, I ripped a piece of two by four and I put it right here, right there. And I secured it up there with a saddle clamp. You know what a saddle clamp is? So that looks about like this. All right, so I was able to go over the half inch conduit and then right onto this piece of material that I ripped here. It was thicker than that. So I like that. put a screw down into it and construct to get that to hold on. And then I put one here and here. And it made the whole thing pretty rigid. It really did. And then once we put the tarp on, we put the tarp, well, before we put the tarp on, we wrapped this with chip wire. All right? And I have a way of doing that. Use uh, a small come along and I push it around it. 
and it's sort of a it's sort of an aircraft principle in a way it uh, it pulls the whole thing together and makes it even more rigid. And then we take the tarp and go over the top here like this. The tarp has a, a pocket in it that I put another piece of conduit in. And then we put a ratchet scrap, strap down to this two by four and one down to this two by four the whole thing down so when it's on there you can go to the top and go Dung, just like a drum that's also a piece of con that goes across there like that okay all right and this on the ones that I this is open and this is open because I have dogs so the white birds so long as they have food in their chicken tractor, they don't jump up. Freedom Rangers do. So on their chicken tractors, we do have to put a cover over them or they jump up. And then to move this, we have that goes through off of that front two by four. Just a piece of polypropylene rope. And you know, I can just pick that up and walk it backwards and uh moves really easy um, because once you pick it up you're only resting on the corner of this two by four back here you just resting on the corner of the ground so there's very little you know, contact with the ground you pick it up you walk it backwards and it just comes with you i'm not a real big proponent of like putting the dolly back there because it's an extra set, right i would rather just have it so uh, it, it's up off the ground and it will drag kind of easy. On some of them, I extend this back like that. So when I pick it up, it clears this back piece completely off the ground. And that worked pretty good too. I think I would do that. So I'd be sacrificing maybe six inches of space total on the chicken tractor. So this one is going to provide me ability to move these chickens every single day with ease all right with ease it's not, not like i got to get three guys out there i got to fire up a tractor um you might think well that's a good idea you built mark builds them uh, 10 by 12 i think i'll build one 10 yards by 12 yards and then i can put three times as many chickens in there and I only have to move one. I know I know somebody that would say that. I'm looking at you, Justin. You would say something like that. Right? Well, I tried that already, pal. I already tried it. Don't do it. Chrono bears with it. And then carry Pettiprin. All right, we got some new people in here. Chrono bear's not new. I might be seeing you this weekend. Ran into him in a restaurant up in town. Sleazy dive. What were we doing in there? I was there too. <laughs> um, so yeah, this design, when I'm here, when I'm at the front of the tractor and I pick that up, I can see all the way to the back of the tractor. I had a problem with my generation three, where when I picked that up in front, I could not see to the back because it was just a little too low. So the problem I would have is the chickens uh, put 75 in here. Let me go over that in a minute. But the chickens will congregate back here because I'm up here, so they want to move away from me at first. And they'll congregate back. So now I can pick it up, and I can just bump them a little bit, and they'll waddle forward, and then I can a little bit. At first, they're not real smart about it. You've got to bump them a couple days in a row and it even helps if you have somebody helping you that can like rattle a, a, a bag or something or just a scare hole forward um what you do not want to do is move these with any kind of piece of machinery because if you go out there with like a say a four-wheeler or a tractor or something like that um it's going to scare them and what we've seen is when i 
they go out there, and it scares them. They forget who you are from one day to the next until they get a little older, and then they're like, oh, the bringer of food is here. You know, and they, then they come forward to you, right? Even at first, they're quite the dogs walking walking out there, but then after a while, they don't pay any attention to the dogs. Um, so, yeah, you don't really want to use a piece to do that. The first big one I built, it had to be moved with the tractor, and I didn't really have any anybody telling me how to do this i just i just thought it but what would happen is when i got near the chicken track the big chicken tractor with the track they would all move to the back tractor and even when they were big birds they would pile and when i tried to move it there was just this pile of birds and, and you wind up running them over or worse you know so it, it really did work I, I say go ahead and try it. Maybe you'll discover something because at one time an expert told me that you cannot scale up the 50 uh, biochar retort. He told me that, right? That you cannot scale this up. And I just thought, I don't write about that. I didn't I didn't believe him, although I really liked the guy, I respected him. I think I'm going to try it anyway. And so I did. And sure enough, that was our generation four uh, biochar maker that we've generated, you know, tons of biochar with. And it did work. So I don't want to say that this cannot be upscaled. I don't want to say that because I could be wrong. It has happened. But no, I, I could be wrong. But, um, in, in my experience and then some of the accounts of people that I know pretty well that have been doing this for a long time, uh, 120 square foot uh, chicken tractor, the footprint on that is 120 square feet, and then 75 birds into it. About, you know, plus or minus a little, you're going to be okay. not talking plus or minus. I'm talking plus or minus like 10 at the most. What happens, and we've done this too many times. Uh, you get a chick tractor this big, and I have, let's say, 200 birds that I need to put out chicken tractors. I only have two chicken tractors right now. And so I put 100 in each one. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, well, you know, when that one gets freed up we're gonna be butchering those ones this week then i'll switch 50 of them over to you know i'll put 25 from this pen and 25 from this pen and you know we'll switch them over and you'd think that the day that it comes i would be out there doing that but imagine that something else comes up and i don't get to it then okay you have a hundred of them in 120 square feet and then you go out there and you realize oh that was a week ago that i was going to do that or two weeks ago why do you notice that is because you go out there and you notice oh these chickens are pecking each other and these crazy um, cornish cross as soon as there is a red spot on one of the other ones all of them will line up just to peck that one chicken and you go out there and you have a dead chicken and then what will happen is somebody will get blood on them oh let's peck that Oh, more blood. Now let's peck that. Oh, it's a, it turns into a peck fest, right? And that happens when it's too many of them in a space. If they start doing that and you catch them, all you can do is take any, any of them that have any color on them at all out, and then they make this a blue coat, comes in cute little cans, it's a spray can, and then you... You hit them with blue coat and it turns it from red to blue and you'll notice chickens aren't interested in anything blue but if you look at your waterers and your uh your feeders you'll notice they're red and because chickens are kind of a, attracted to red i'll gonna peck that right so that's um uh, 
Yeah, so 120 or 100 would be too many in that, that chicken tractor design. Now let's say, okay, what if you put 50 in there? What happens then? It'd be more like 40. 50 will probably work in that. Um, but what we see when we have 40 in there is there's not enough. And so they're kind of afraid to get anywhere near the perimeter. And so they all are water and the, and the feeder. It's, it's changing. So 75 works. Much less. Let's go. 40 is not enough. When they get older, then they do. They kind of branch out. But at first, they're kind of like, ooh, you know, it's kind of scary. But when they're 75, they're just motoring around out there. Today, we, on our brooder, our brooder is, uh, let's see if I can do this. Our brooder is like this view from of it's got a steel roof on it, right? And then over here we have a little run that it's detachable from the house. You can move it on its own, and it's basically made the same as this. That's where I got the idea to do this building with con, um, and it works really well. And then there's a little trap door right here that we can just drop. And when you drop that door, the chickens will. The chickens are in there. They're three weeks old. They'll, they'll sit at the door, all day, and just look out. And then one of them, will go outside. And as soon as one goes out, it's like, okay, gotta go out. And everybody goes out then. And like when I'm done here, I gotta go out and make sure that they have gone back in because they, they don't compute on that. But it's it's quite mild out tonight comparatively to I think I know I can hear it blowing out there right now oh, it's 50 now and it's it's sunny nope it's 55 and cloudy and, and the moon's out but at 12 a.m 40 percent chance of thunderstorms and then at 1 a.m there's 80 percent so that means to me you know i'm looking at this and all day tomorrow it's going to rain yeah so when i see that i'm thinking okay what how is that going to affect me tonight you know do i need to get up for that and i'm thinking eh, i don't know uh if it's really Bad, it will wake me up and that might make me decide ah, I'll just go out and check them if if you do pile and you're able to pull the pile apart and then stay out there and keep moving them apart until it settles down out there you know you just you know the wind settles down and maybe the the thunder and lightning settle down you just keep them pulled apart and then when everything settles down they'll just kind of go back to sleep. You don't want any light out there at night. Um, and then in the past, we had a hailstorm a couple of years ago. During the day, like at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, we lost a whole bunch of chicks in the brooder because we never thought to go and check them. Never thought about it. All right, so there's our contractors. You can build them any way you want. I mean, people have used rollers to move people build them out of pvc pipe i never really thought that that was very good um, you know there's a lot of different designs out there some people like so that they can go in them right uh, we don't feel the need to go in because the way we unload them is we wait until the sun goes down so it's dark out and when these chickens are in the dark they just they just sit. They don't want. They they might move away from you, but they're not going to run away. And uh, uh, if you try to get them during the day, and you try to get in the chicken tractor, 
Ooh, that's no fun. That's no fun at all, especially people. You know, I'll send my kids in once in a while. Usually we wait till some, we go out, we pick the chicken tractor up, two people, uh, one in front, one in back, and we just move it off of them. Like, so we move it to the next position, the next clean position, and then it's actually ready to reload the next day. So we're going to unload the chicken tractor to crates, and we'll bring those crates to the shop, and we'll stage them there, you know, 10 o'clock at night, and they're ready to be processed the next day. So we're doing all of night. It's uh, it's cool at night, so um, by the time the next morning comes, the chickens are just gone. They're, they're just so right down. They're sitting together in the crates like, hey, when do we eat? And then they're coming right up of the crates right into the killing cones. And they just, hey. So the, a lot of, you know, like if we had to go out and chase them, all hot and bothered in the sun, and then put them in the chicken crate, and you know they know something's coming. That's, that's not a good situation. We to be calm down by the time we do the process. Of, and having internet problems, that's what it's telling me. Okay, let me go back. I'm going to say uh, that's it. Unless uh, you guys have some questions. Here, and then I can be uh, answering questions, but the things have to be pertinent to this subject, please. Okay. okay. Um, extra is going to be extra avoidance. We're building this equipment is to avoid disasters with our lives because our goal right we get day old checks our goal is to get them eight or ten weeks old whatever how we like them or however big we like them and uh, if you lose half of them that's not good uh usually four out of 250 so i share my daughter is like everything i think one of them actually had a feed to over on her. So, um, you know, Rachel's really honest about, you know, her her losses. Uh, we, I, I talked to you all about biochar last week. Uh, it's the way to go. It is the way to go if you want nice, healthy chickens. They should get some every single day. The internet just crashed. Is it totally crashed? Yeah, I can't really understand you. Okay. Let's see if anybody's saying anything. All right. Oh, Carrie, all right. Well, I'm more that it's that um, so that they you know, it's not working. That's because it's getting so I've been in and out of my end. All right, so I guess I'll pack it in. Keep going. All right. Uh, okay, let me go back here and release. Crown of Bear. Was cool running it, yeah. That was cool. I, I walk in, I didn't recognize these guys at first. Well, I was, I was coming in the sun, you know, and I wasn't expecting to see anybody. Hey, how you doing? Like what? I don't know anybody here. We've been using those low voltage heater plates in our incubator. Works great, no fire risk. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Justin Z is asking me about pluckers. I have a pretty big one. I have a, uh, it's a Pickwick, but it's a, it's a beast. And I got a great deal on it. 
I've never really used anything other than a very small, like a whiz bang. <clears throat> Huh. All right, Carrie Predpen is the one that made these. So thank you. I love them. I really, I love them. I'm going to put them on everything and tattoo. Chrono saying, time to get on that Starlink waiting list. Right on. Get a T-Mobile hotspot. You know what? Okay, well, I didn't see any questions in there, and I guess I am cutting it in and out, according to my... So, uh, I'm going to get going. Uh, <coughs> tomorrow night show will happen. We are deleting the Wednesday night show from here on out. <clears throat> so I'm sorry to have to report that, but that's just what we're going to have to do. Um, and I will be back at you on Thursday. And Thursday we're going to talk about uh, watering systems. Watering systems. And then Friday we will dip something else but i'll let you know thursday talk about friday but from here on out the wednesday night show is so we're going to four nights so five and we'll see you on thursday good night everybody